and welcome back to another Transformers review. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Earthspark Deluxe Class Megatron. And how do you guys all feel about this upcoming show? Honestly, I'm actually just excited that we're going to be seeing something new for Transformers. We've been pretty starved since that Netflix War for Cybertron series concluded, as sadly Rise of the Beasts didn't hit the screen this year as it was originally planned to, so I'll definitely give it a watch. It probably isn't designed for my demographic, but hey, it looks a lot of fun, and I do like kind of the spin that they're going to be putting on the Megatron character. It's something refreshing and I think could actually open up a few possibilities in regards to plot, but let me know down below what you guys are thinking so far. Here we have the Deluxe Earthspark Megatron, which I think is kind of two Megatron figures in this scale. They're also bringing out a Warrior class, which looks to be a little more simplistic and kind of more gimmick orientated. This is more along the lines of the Deluxe figures that we saw for the Transformers Cyberverse line, and I really do like the design of this guy. I mean, this is Megatron. They've done a great job. As we take a look at the details, a very nicely painted and sculpted head. Of course, it's not going to be to everybody's taste, but this is what Megatron actually looks like in the show. We do get the Decepticon logo, which may or may not be accurate to the series. Again, watch out for some of those spoilers. I don't like these kind of propeller blade things that we just have hanging out to the arms. I am aware that these are inaccurate to the series, and they don't actually tab into anything per se. They do just kind of rattle around, which can be a little annoying. I do wish that you could have actually taken this and clipped it into the forearm to make it secure but nevertheless as we come down here to the legs I think they look decent but the figure is very lightweight and incredibly lacking in the plastic department I mean he's super hollow here for the back of the arms and the legs I mean you could literally store your Transformers collection in these there is no substance to them at all I kind of understand it due to how he transforms but this is the same price as the Studio Series Deluxe Hot Rod and you guys all know that I think that figure is near enough god tier so again all these Deluxe figures are just kind of falling short in comparison in terms of accessories we do get that massive iconic G1 Megatron arm cannon which has actually been sculpted decently I do like the way that's turned out and considering this guy is a part of kind of an upcoming builder figure that being the Mandroid Megatron does come with the left arm which is humanoid in terms of design so sadly no mechanical components just yet I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to complete this I mean we'll just have to see how the rest of the figures turn out I know that their Optimus Prime is going to be a remold of the Cyberverse Optimus and Shockwave is just a straight up repaint so I'm not too keen on picking those up so probably won't have a review for the Mandroid, but here's the Builder figure piece. Now, articulation-wise for Megatron, this guy is sadly so outdated. So the head is merely just on a ball joint, but it is so restricted. I mean, it can look up and down okay, but nothing left to right, and does just simply rotate. We do get these massive honking shoulders, which can rotate the full 360 on a ball joint, and due to transformation, you can also hinge this upwards, but be careful you don't donk Megatron on the head, as these things are definitely going to knock him out. We don't get any form of bicep rotation basically all of the range of motion here is packed into this tiny ball joint that we have for the elbow so this can rotate left to right nothing at all out of the wrist and I definitely think they could have done that and sadly they've not even painted the whole hand so again super lackluster no waste articulation this is the first modern transformer that I don't think we've seen this on for a very long time so that's a shame but the hip skirts are on ball joints so they can move around we do get a decent kick going forwards and if you hinge up the butt flap it also does allow the legs to kick backwards that far so so far so good kick out to the side rotation here for the thigh the only advantage of having super hollow legs is that the knee joint is really awesome I mean that can bend to a fantastic range but nothing really out of the foot I mean technically it can pivot left to right but I mean you're really not going to get anything out of that and due to transformation the toe can pivot forwards and backwards so as far as an actual robot mode figure goes I think this figure does just fall slightly short I mean the articulation definitely isn't nothing spectacular and in terms of the overall design of Megatron whilst it looks cool and accurate to the show I just think the hollowness and kind of how lightweight and cheap he feels does just not make this worth the $25 price point. Now as we take a look at a few comparisons, first of all we have the Studio Series Hot Rod and you guys may be wondering what on earth has he brought that figure out here for? Well it's basically because both of these are identical price point wise. If you log on to Hasbro Pulse this is $24.99 and the same can be said for Hot Rod but they are worlds apart in regards to engineering and just quality and I know you guys are all going to say to me well this Megatron is based on a series which is a complete different demographic to what this live action 
action movie Hot Rod is. And I do agree with you, but this is still a $25 deluxe figure, so I would expect the same level of engineering and quality as far as the plastic goes as this Hot Rod. As if I wanted to pick up a cheaper, more simplistic figure, then I would have picked up the Warrior class. I've picked up a deluxe because I'm expecting better engineering, and I'm sorry to say, but this figure is nowhere near the level of awesomeness that we got here from Hot Rod. Now next up, to further illustrate my point, here we have the deluxe Cyberverse Megatron, which some could argue is based on a very similar kind of audience demographic to the Earthspark show, and as far as the George Clooney Megatron goes, this figure absolutely annihilates, hands down, the Earthspark Deluxe Megatron. I mean, not only in terms of articulation, this guy is so poseable. He has butterfly joints, wrist rotation, proper waist rotation, and a really deep ankle, but almost everything on this figure was filled out, and in terms of parts count, I mean, this thing was way heftier. Yeah, granted, it had a few hollow spaces in the back of the arms, but nowhere near to the magnitude that we're getting here on this new Earthspark Megatron, and just handing them, I mean, it feels like if you were to blow this, it would literally find itself on the other side of the room. So, again, very lackluster in terms of quality for this new Earthspark version, and if you're torn as to what kind of animated Megatron you want in the collection, may I suggest this figure? Next up, here we have the Cyberverse Deluxe Optimus Prime, and I've brought him out simply because the new Earthspark Deluxe Optimus is going to be a remold, so scaling should be roughly identical. I mean, they look good together, and if you want this Megatron to pair with some of those previous Cyberverse Deluxes, then I think it's going to fit perfectly in as the design aesthetic is kind of similar. But yeah, there we have that comparison. Here he is alongside the Cyberverse Starscream. Again, hands down wins engineering-wise. Earthspark Megatron pales in comparison, and not to mention that all of those Cyberverse Deluxe figures not only came with a builder figure piece, and dare I say were slightly more engineered, but they all had some really good accessories. I mean, the blast effects that we got in some of those packs are by far some of my favourite that we've seen across the line for many years. So yeah, there's that comparison here. And again, just because this Shockwave is going to be repainted into the Earthspark line, here we have the Deluxe Shockwave from Cyberverse, and much bigger when in comparison to Megatron, and dare I say, a little heftier. And that was basically Megatron in his robot mode. I do apologise guys that for this being the first Earthspark review over on the channel that it's not super positive, but I just have to keep it real with you all. I mean, this guy costs the same amount as our Studio Series Deluxe figures, and whilst the demographic of the show may be different to what the movies are, I do expect the same level of engineering and plastic quality when it comes to these deluxe releases, as if I wanted a cheaper, more simplified figure, then I'd pick up their Warrior class alternative, and I just think this isn't much of an upgrade when in comparison to those Warrior figures. But anyway, getting down to transformation, you are going to want to remove the Fusion Cannon, and like I mentioned previously, just check out how loose and floppy that arm kibble is. It really should have locked in, but anyhow, you're going to want to wriggle this section out, take the butt flap, hinge this up, and probably the only geek out moment from the transformation is where you take the upper torso and the legs, pull it clean up, and Megatron's head will shoot into the belly. I thought that was really cool, and it's kind of excusable as to why he doesn't have a waist rotation, but no excuse at all for the lack of wrists and a better range out of the ankles. We'll then want to take the shoulders and angle these sections up. Now, this can be kind of tough to actually get these pieces to lock in. You're just going to want to give that there a good old squeeze, click that in, and then the skirt pieces are going to come around, slide into this tiny little groove, and do the same here for the opposite side. You'll want to take the propeller blades, hinge these sections out, and do the same here for this side. And you'll actually want to rotate at this ball joint and then disengage the bicep from the shoulder and then hinge the elbow up to a 90 degree angle and snap that propeller blade into the side of the shoulder. So do the same here for this side, rotate, disengage that joint, and just click that in there. And to be honest, it's quite straightforward from here on. So take the feet, snap them into place, come around to this side, angle these sections out, collapse these massive hollow cavities into the thighs on both sides. So click that in there, take the butt flap, click that into place, and for some finishing touches, you'll wanna bring back in the fusion cannon and actually split it into two distinctive components. So there we go, it just self-combusts. And then what will happen here is you'll want to align the mech tech ports up with the appropriate slots on either side. So this one is gonna snap into there. And of course, this one will peg in here. And there we have Megatron fully transformed up into his helicopter mode. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like the design of this Megatron. I definitely think it's one of the coolest kind of animated Megatron designs that we've seen for quite some time. And I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but it's kind of a revert back to his Transformers animated appearance where Megatron was actually a helicopter. Now, as we take a look at the details, as you guys can see, some nice silver at the front. I do like the blue cockpit and it comes together really nicely. I mean, it definitely does feel solid. Nothing's 
rattling around everything has a nice secure place to peg into and I do like how they seamlessly integrated the fusion cannon into the plane that was a great use of some of those extra parts I thought that was neat and you can actually surprisingly rotate the propellers so that was cool but why they couldn't have engineered a hinge joint for the wrist to have actually concealed and rotated back into the forearm is a little beyond me especially considering again this is a deluxe the same price point as studio series hot rod let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this guy as a whole now engineering wise he's very simplistic and to further illustrate my point here we have the cyberverse deluxe megatron which i'm a little embarrassed to say left me a little perplexed when i was transforming it here for this comparison i mean i forgot how well engineered these cyberverse deluxe figures were and i was expecting the same from these earth spark figures but at least in the case of megatron that hasn't kind of carried over this is really lightweight very simplistic to transform and i'm hoping that bumblebee is a little better but just to give you that comparison between the new animated Megatron and the previous version. Now here for a few more comparisons, again we've brought out some of those Cyberverse Deluxes, so we have him alongside that Cyberverse Deluxe Starscream, and again, engineering wise, this thing absolutely takes a massive dump on Earthspark Megatron, and just in terms of the plastic, I mean this thing is way heftier and has considerably many more parts, I mean just check out all of the various different hinge joints and kind of additional pieces that this Starscream has in comparison to Megatron, literally night and day. And then finally we have him here alongside the Deluxe Cyberverse Optimus, again it's going to be retooled into the Earthspark Optimus, so you should roughly know how these two are going to pair once that newer Optimus does come out. And wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Earthspark Deluxe Class Megatron. To put it bluntly, this is pretty crap, and I'm so sorry to be so harsh, especially as this is the first Earthspark review over on the channel, but I just have to keep it real with you guys. Now I completely understand and respect that the show, by no stretch of the imagination, is in intended for my specific audience demographic, but if I wanted a simplified, cheaper Megatron alternative, then I would be picking up their Warrior class. I've chosen a Deluxe as I'm expecting a better figure, one that is better articulated, better engineered, and comes with considerably more accessories, whereas this just doesn't do that, especially in comparison to the Cyberverse Deluxe Megatron. I mean, that guy came with three weapons, the Fusion Cannon, the two Missile Pods, it then came with a Blast Effect and a Builder Figure piece, so I just think you're getting considerably less here for your money and I mean when you compare it to the likes of the Studio Series Hot Rod which is again in the same price point this just absolutely pales in comparison. Now of course I can't speak for the rest of the figures in this wave Megatron could have maybe just got the short end of the stick but considering this is Megatron one of the most popular characters surely this should be one of the best out of the wave so if this is a sign of the quality we can expect then sadly guys I don't think there's going to be that many more Transformers Earth Spark reviews coming up over on the channel. I'd love to see your thoughts down in the comment section below. Again I can only apologize apologize for how critical I've been but I just have to warn you that for the price when in comparison to other alternatives you can get out there this just isn't worth it. Let me know your thoughts down below and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.